Gensight is a gene therapy company devoted to the disruptive and innovative intervention for retinal disease and neurodegenerative disease. We have a program that addresses labors hereditary optic neuropathy, and I will share with you an update of the recently available to us 72-week readout of the data for this study. Let us remind ourselves that Labor's hereditary optic neuropathy is not Labor's congenital amaurosis. Ours is a disease of the retinal ganglion cell and its axons, and it is those axons that form the optic nerve. Our photoreceptors are in fact present. It is an inherited, genetically determined form of blindness. It is, in fact, the most common inherited mitochondrial disease, causing rapid sequential blindness in otherwise healthy young adults, even though they carry the genetic defect since birth, they lead perfectly normal lives for two decades and suddenly go blind in both eyes. It has a pathognomonic phenotype expression of disc edema and a peculiar surface telangiatic change of the vessels that do not leak on fluorescein. How have we approached this rare ultra-often disease? Well, there's a monogenetic defect in one of the mitochondrial genes that allows for a missense mutation and the correct protein not to be formed. We generate and build a replacement gene. We transfect the retinal ganglion cell with an AAV2 vector. That cytoplasmic change then becomes transcribed into mitochondrial RNA. Then that becomes translated into the protein which is synthesized and driven actively through the two membranes of the mitochondria into its matrix, allowing a changing of the position of equipoise in the respiratory chain complex. What has the company done? They began with the fibroblasts of patients with this disease and showed that GS10 restores the respiratory chain complex. They then moved to an animal model of this disease and demonstrated that GS10, our drug, prevents the optic atrophy and visual loss in this model. And then we took this into man. There has been a phase one, two study completed. We have two fully enrolled recruited phase three studies. There is a third phase three study actively going on with very good enrollment. There is long-term follow-up of all of our subjects, and there is, in fact, a registry to best and better look at the natural history of this disease. The two pivotal trials, rescue and reverse, are only different in the interval of time between loss of vision for the subject and their enrollment in this study. For rescue, the vision loss is of six months or less, for reverse, the study I will give you details about, the vision loss was between six months and one year. All subjects had confirmed this unique ND4 mutation, the 11778 flavor of Labor's disease. <clears throat> and they had vision, <clears throat> excuse me, of counting fingers were better. What did we look at for efficacy analysis? These were predefined points, our primary efficacy analysis was directed to high contrast visual acuity as measured by ET DRS letters transformed to logmar acuity. Our secondary endpoints were contrast sensitivity, a low contrast visual acuity chart, Bailey Robesum, and of course we had the anatomic biomarkers of high resolution spectral domain OCT. What did we see? At week 48, 
we had a drug-treated group and a sham-treated group, and the drug-treated eyes showed one letter better than the sham-treated eyes, mean averages of the groups. But at week 72, these curves began to diverge, and the drug-treated eyes of these patients showed a 15-letter improvement on ETDRS letters. Surprisingly, unexpectedly, unexplained, the sham eyes improved as well with a 12-letter gain. What else did we see for efficacy signals in this phase three trial? We monitored contrast sensitivity, and what we saw was that the contrast sensitivity of the drug-treated eyes improved over time, and that improvement continued through, including week 72. Now step back for a minute. How is the visual system of primates designed? It is not designed to afford resolution and discrimination between high contrast letters presented on a screen in an ophthalmology office with blackout shades. The visual system is designed to pick up edge detection. And in fact, it's designed to pick up movement of edge detection. And so you might say in the real world, perhaps a better metric for following these patients with visual loss would be a metric like contrast sensitivity. What did we see? We saw as well that if we ask and look at responder rates and use our definition of clinically meaningful improvement in contrast sensitivity of 0.3 log change, we had almost 46% of our drug-treated eyes responding, but 24.3% of our sham eyes. And the difference was clinically significant and statistically significant to our internal analyses and statistical study. What else did we see besides that improvement in visual function? We saw that by OCT metrics, the ganglion cell layer of the drug-treated eyes was significantly preserved. Again, statistically significantly so. We also saw that the ETDRS macular volume of the drug-treated eyes was significantly preserved as well. Again, statistically significantly so. What about safety? In fact, as you would expect from an intravitreal injection, there was inflammation. The inflammation was seen in the drug-treated eyes. It was transient. There was occasional intraocular pressure elevations as expected. These adverse events were not surprising. They were entirely expected for intravitreal therapy. All treatments were responsive and short-lived and did not leave any signature as they improved. What was the summary of our reverse results? Primary efficacy endpoint, because the drug-treated eyes improved and the sham-treated eyes improved, we missed our primary efficacy endpoint. However, we saw statistically significant protection of the retinal ganglion cell layer, the papillomacular bundle, the temporal retinal nerve fiber layer, and the ETDRS macular volume. And in fact, our responder rate for contrast sensitivity was in fact much better in our drug-treated eyes. When a trial misses its primary efficacy endpoint, what are the questions we ask? Well, Trials like this are viewed as binary events. Regrettably, the market doesn't quite see it that way. We say to ourselves, maybe we chose the wrong primary efficacy endpoint. In fact, if we had used the percentage of eyes that reached 2,200 or better for our primary efficacy endpoint, we in fact would have met that endpoint with a statistically significant difference. So is our cup half full? Is it half empty? You decide. Where are we as a company? Where are our inflection points? We've released our 48-week data for reverse. I've shared with you the 72-week data for reverse. In the first part of January of 2019, we will have the top-line data from the rescue study. 
We anticipate CME filing in the end of 2019 and BLA filing in 2020. Short story, gene therapy, the eyes. This is the future of ophthalmology. This is the future of medicine. Gensight is poised to be a participant in the successful involvement and reaching of those promises that we've heard so much about today. Thank you. Thank you.